Good morning and welcome to Hymns by Request. I'm Greg Johnson and I want to welcome you to my home, to the piano, and to just this time to have some fun singing. For the last year, we have been enjoying this together, and I want to thank each and every one of you who has been a regular part of this. Um, it began last Easter Sunday, when I simply wanting to feel a little bit more celebratory, decided I'm going to sing some hymns, because hymns always raise my spirits. Singing does that. And so I began doing it, and I thought, well, maybe some other people would like it. And I turned on the uh, the uh, iPad at that time and uh, just began singing. And it has grown immensely. So I welcome you to this morning. Now, this weekend, we, actually the world, begins to celebrate two major holidays and two major religions, and that is... Passover begins, and with Palm Sunday, we begin Holy Week. So next week, I am not going to be doing any programming. My journey in Lent this year has been taking a wonderful course by Father Richard Rohr, someone whom many of you know I speak of very often. And um, I'm going to use next week as an opportunity to be still, to go into deeper meditation on many of the wonderful lessons we've been having and just have a quiet time for myself. Because I have to admit, um, since the pandemic began, began, I have been broadcasting every week. But come Easter Sunday, 3 o'clock Easter Sunday afternoon, April 4th, I'll be back with Hymns by Request. This is where it began. Now this morning, I invite all of you, I've chosen hymns that deal with the Lenten season, but I've also chosen them so that we as a family of song and a family of faith, many, many different faiths from all over the world, because I, I see many of you coming on. Unfortunately, these glasses don't let me see that as well. But I'm always thrilled as I look at the feed later. I have chosen hymns this morning with a heavy heart, like many of you. Here in America, we have a terrible addiction, a crime, an addiction to guns, and guns kill. People using guns kill. And we've had two horrible experiences within the last 10-day period, first in Atlanta and then this week in Colorado. And so I'm urging everyone, first of all, that indeed our thoughts and our prayers are with all. But even more so, I am urging that during this these times of reflection, during Passover and Holy Week, that our common sense, our common goodness, will prevail. Weapons of war are not needed. Weapons of war are ridiculous in the hands of the general public. And people who come around with the Second Amendment, they need to remember, guns were needed for protection, for food, for hunting, yes, but people weren't buying cannons. And the same thing applies today. No one is talking about taking that away. But there is no need for weapons of war to be in the hands of the general public. And we need to wake up to that and stop all the nonsense, which is exactly what it is. Let us rededicate ourselves to life and living. Now, this morning, as we always do, I'm going to start with our prayer. And I sing it for what I've just talked of. Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me, this is what I pray. 
change my heart, oh God, make it ever true, change my heart, oh God, may I be like you, may I be May I be like you. The first hymn that I'm going to do this morning always brings to mind a very, very dear friend and mentor, Dr. James Forbes. I met Dr. Forbes way, way back when I first came out to here to New York to study, and we've been blessed to remain very good friends. And on the many, many occasions when I've heard him preach, we've certainly have been blessed to have him over at Marble. Often he and his wife arrive together, and Mrs. Forbes, Betty, is an extraordinary musician. And frequently, Dr. Forbes begins his sermon, because he's a great lover of music, a great lover of music and of hymns. And he will often ask Betty to play, and together they will lead all of us. Well, this is one of the hymns that they very frequently sing together, and I think it's a wonderful one as we prepare to walk into Holy Week. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. May that be our prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Mold me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. What an absolutely fabulous text. Melt me. Get rid of the hardness. Get rid of this ego as we go to essence. Melt me. Mold me. Fill me. Use me. What a very powerful sermon in four little phrases. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. May that be our prayer. Now, I also want to sing two hymns this morning, particularly as comfort, I pray, for those who have lost loved ones due to these terrible, terrible shootings. Rock of Ages. <laughs> Cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Let the water 
and the blood from thy riven side which flowed. We of sin, the double cure, cleanse me from its guilt and power. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyelids close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, see the on thy judgment throne, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself. And another hymn, again a Lenten hymn, in fact, uh, at Prayer Circle, Ken Dake has been using this as the closing hymn for the Lenten period. Uh, many of you who attend Prayer Circle uh, from Marble Collegiate Church that's on the uh, um, Facebook every week. Um, when I survey the wondrous cross. so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. And may it be our prayer that we ask, O Master, O Master, let me walk with thee. So 
To close our broadcast this morning, I've chosen a hymn that I haven't done for quite a long time, and I thought that you um, that you might enjoy hearing it as well, because it's a hymn of great strength. It's a hymn of comfort. There is a balm in Gilead. <laughs> The bomb in Gilead to make the wounded all. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged. And think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded old. Like Peter, if you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say he died for all. There is a bomb in Gilead to make Remember that as we go forward. If you're part of the Jewish faith, I say to you, Ashena Pesach. To those of you from the Christian tradition, a very blessed and deeply meaningful Holy Week. It's the high holidays of Christianity. And I look forward to celebrating with you on Easter Sunday at three o'clock. And I want to remind you as I always do at times like this. When two great faiths, Christianity and Judaism, are spending time in very special times of the year, there is an enormous, an enormous amount of spiritual energy throughout the entire world. And no matter what, your background may be. Maybe you've been wounded by one of these religions. All right, that's possible. But the divine within you is calling to you, saying, this is the moment. Come home. 
you may see it in a different way. For you, the gospel may be the 12 steps. It certainly is for me. Come home. Cling on to that spiritual energy. And together, let us celebrate in all of our diversity, our unity of oneness as children of the divine. And I love to think of it as being the divine within me, at times like this, reaches out to each and every one of my brothers and sisters, and together we connect with the divinity of creation. Use whatever name you want. God bless, and I look forward to seeing you on Easter Sunday when we'll do hymns by request. Thank you and remember onward in love and caring. Namaste. God bless. Thank you.